All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. There's Brian Hayes, Zero Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. The three of us are back. It's been a while. Good to see you boys. Lots of activity in the sports world. Everyone's looking good. How are we feeling on a Monday (laughs) afternoon? I'm feeling refreshed and recharged. A little time in Tampa. And I'll tell you what, I don't travel much, fellas, but the sights and sounds of people traveling, noodles, I don't know how you deal with it. Because we talked a couple weeks ago about, I think we talked about people just taking their shoes and socks off in airports. Was it airports? Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. 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 Absolutely. I I saw that. No, it's everywhere. Hotel lobby, runners, socks, and just air out the feet right in the lobby of the hotel. Why do people? That's not acceptable. Just go to your room and do that. <laughs> people are doing it everywhere. Little yeah. cafes, just let them air out. You can't do it, man. It's, I don't know if it was a COVID thing and we all got really too comfortable in our own world and then we brought it to the rest of the world and just assumed that the rest of the world is our own world, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Or it's like we all want to be in Vegas. Like it's like Vegas rules yeah. are applied to the rest of the world, right? <laughs> like I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday because he was joking about that too. He was, you know, he was at a pool party in Vegas. This is years ago. And he lost his shoes. And he's like, I had to walk through the front hall. And I'm like, well, it's Vegas. Probably no one even cared. He's like, you're right. It's Vegas. Nobody cared. But you can't do that like on Madison Avenue in New York, you know, like in Miami. This is like nice hotel Tampa lobby. Yeah, exactly. And it was a family and two of the sons were just like there's couching areas and he just took the wheels off, socks off and aired them out bare feet. And I'm like, what? And and putting them everywhere. It's like you don't need to do it. No way. I, I would be more concerned. And I've seen this before, guys. The shoes come off, the socks come off, and the toenails look like Lloyd Christmases, and mm-hmm. they're yellow, and they curl mm-hmm. down, and when they walk, you can hear them click like a horse. <laughs> so <laughs> that's concerning because if you're, if you're sitting in seat 3A and 3B, the guy beside you has yellow nails that are an inch too long and curl down, and they've got some for- sort of foot fungus or whatever. Yeah. That like should be elf. illegal. He yeah. should be and dragged that, that off should the be pe- illegal. You yeah. know what the Americans have also taken full ownership of? And this is just an observation. It's not a criticism. The loudspeaker uh, conversation. Yeah, everywhere. It, dude. Yeah. It, everywhere. It, 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 they yeah. own it. I'll yeah. give them credit. They own it. But everywhere, it's like, yeah. And it's fully on speaker. You meet me there. Like, put some buds in and just have a car. Text the person. Nobody right. needs yeah. to hear that nonsense. Especially in Florida where you can take that call outside if you yeah. want to. Right? Yeah. Like I, I understand yeah. it. If you're in Minnesota and it's freezing, you're like, sorry, I'm going to be in here. We're all at the Target or whatever it is. But I'm going to stand over here on the side and take the call. In Florida, it's totally unnecessary. Yeah. Florida is a different world, though. I love it. Oh, you love it. You were down there. I was down there. I saw some stuff in Florida. Oh my! God. That I I had such a large appreciation for, but also just an understanding that I could never possibly do it. I couldn't live like that. I couldn't approach that type of situation like that. But yet, you know, everyone's having a good time. The weather's nice. I guess the GMs are all down there, right? Everyone's oh, yeah. they're really getting work done. And we got Doug Armstrong coming up in an hour. And he's going to be obviously the GM of Canada, and we're going to predominantly speak about that, what his plan is for next year and in 2026. But he's down there, right? He's working. They, they got to go to Florida. We always say this every single year. Why don't you go to Detroit for a year? Yeah. Check in on Columbus or go to Winnipeg. Wyoming. You know? Go to, go to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Exactly. Like, no. Go to somewhere. Yellowstone. Edmonton, yeah. just get a boardroom in Edmonton. Why aren't you there? <laughs> yeah, then yeah. you want you to see really want to get down to work. The whole get- league will flip. The whole yeah. league will be different. You they, put them in Edmonton for a week, <laughs> it'll be a completely different product. They will have like new rules for three on three. <laughs> They'll take out replay. They if yeah. you locked if you send everybody to Edmonton, twenty one team league noodles next yeah, year. Twenty one team God, league because I I know it's been great weather in Edmonton and then snow the next day like mm-hmm. ridiculous. And I I've got to go there this week and it, like for me it's just. I, I, I'm not sure what I, I was talking to a buddy yesterday. Like, yeah, it's supposed to snow on Thursday. I'm like, snow? Yeah. Like, it's March. Yeah. Like, almost the end of March, too. That's so, what's coming. Uh, it's all good, man. It's still yeah. like, you know, we're kind of in the dog 
days a little bit, like post trade deadline, and yeah, you got some races in the NHL for sure, and some good ones. A- yeah. Absolutely, there's some good ones, and and there's some surprise stories, and there's teams going the other way. You know, like I'm watching Detroit. I'm like, that's an 18 wheeler. Like it's going Terrifying. right. They are driving that 18 wheeler right off the cliff, yeah. and they're letting Washington get back in. I guess technically Pittsburgh's still there. Obviously, the Islanders have been much better since Patrick Waugh and the All Star break. But, you know, the Leafs, in terms of where they're at, I, I know Saturday's game was – it was a wild one. It was a – you know, it, it, it played out the two way it games. played out. It was yeah. two games, basically. Exactly. Yeah. I, I thought they played really well except for inside 90 seconds of a period. <laughs> you know, they give up the late goal in the second, and then obviously we saw what happened coming down the stretch. But they're 12-3-1, and one, I think it is, in their last, like, 16 games. They're playing yeah. well. Like They are they're, playing well. And I'm not – it's just like – there's either one or two ways to look at it where you can be like, you know, not a full lineup, some guys out, Marner's a key guy, and it's like big picture, like why'd you cough up that game? Carolina's a good team. Are you going to bring that into the playoffs, or is it just a one-off where you fell asleep? But it's so difficult to give them the one-off where it's like, come on, guys, like you've been playing well. you got to lock that down. So it's like, what is it? Is it just... One of those nights where you didn't lock it down when it really matters, are they going to lock it down? But as you mentioned, Hayes, what did you say, 12-3-1? and one? Yeah, I believe 12-3-1 and yeah. one in the last 16 games. Pretty they, good record. You pissed away good. a point to the Carolina Hurricanes. But what, what the narrative should be after that, obviously you don't want to give up two goals. What was it, the last minute they minute gave up and two half, minutes? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, last minute one was and inside half. 10 seconds. And Carolina was pressing. They got some good players. I really don't need I, – I, I don't know if we need to blow it out of proportion and just say these guys are a bunch of chokers and they're not ready to win. I mean, no. that, that, that seems like a little bit much after that. Yeah, it, it, the record's fine. And, and my only thing is – and I didn't – I would be fine with it against a team that's like, th- uh, this might be wrong. Like, not in the playoffs, not in the run. Like, I don't want to do it against quality teams because you just never want – if you have to face them in the playoffs, because if you end up going, you know, crossing over and, and going to the deep in the playoffs, I was texting with you, O, last night. Like, Carolina, I think, is a yeah, really they're good, good team. Watching them live, I think they're a good team. So now, you know, you played well against a good team. You know, you played against Boston a couple of weeks ago. Like, you're, you're, it's always a barometer down the stretch. I would have been fine if that was like, I don't know, name me a team. Pittsburgh, yeah, Chicago, Montreal, Anaheim, Chicago. Because you're like, all right, they just let one go, took their foot off the gun. I just never – I want to see them do it against top-tier teams where it's like, we're right there, we beat that team, and that's a good team. And that's the only – and again, you you can't argue wins are wins, 12-3-1, and one, leave it at that. But it's just that one – you don't want to see Caroline. I would have rather I would have been like that's no, Philly or something. No, I hear what like you're that. saying, and and listen, their reputation over the last number of years has been a team that you know you can't lock it down. You've got the game right. in your palm of your hands, and you can't close it. But I actually look, I would look deeper into that loss as what I think is worthy of talking about, and I think a lot of people in the city are doing that. Leaf fans around the world, I would assume, is special teams. You know, I know the power play. Like, I kind of liked Willie <laughs> Nylander's reaction to it today. He's like, man, nah, we were red hot before, and now we stink, but whatever. You know, it happens. You come and go. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of appreciate that, and Marner not being a part of the power play is significant. Sure. The penalty kill is different, though. The penalty kill has been an issue for them all year. Like, that, yeah. that is a legitimate and, and, conversation, and it burned them again on Saturday, and you can talk about the refs and all that kind of stuff. The fact of the matter is you're going to go on the kill. You're going to go on the kill against good teams down the stretch and especially into the playoffs. And we had this conversation uh, at Trade Center. Like, I think it was a, a main panel chat. Oh, you were talking about it. I remember Craig talking about it. And, you know, people deb- – ideally, you have both te- both special teams cooking. Like, it's but a massive But if one's off, I'll take, the, I'll take the power play. Exactly. you got to kill penalties. You have yeah. to kill penalties because of the way the whistle works in the playoffs – we know the way it goes. If it's a tight game or you're up one on the road, chances are someone's going on a power play. You got to kill penalties in the playoffs with like three minutes left to go in a one goal game. You got to do it. Like that can be the difference. It generally is a game of inches, and at times it's a game of special teams. You know, yeah. the goaltender can do it sometimes. Clutch goal te- uh, goal scoring can do it sometimes. Maybe your coach makes an adjustment here or there. But there are a lot of examples over the years where it comes down to a big game or a big stretch of two or three games, you know, at the end of a series, and it's like that team was that team was four for seven on the power play, and that team was one for seven, and that's the yeah. issue. 
You know, and if you do not kill penalties, and I think that's why they brought in Edmondson. I think that's why they brought in Labushkin. That's why they brought in, you know, a number of guys. Dewar, I think, to kill Dewar. penalties. Obviously, yeah. Marner's going to be a part of that, and he's not playing right now, and he's hurt. I think he'll – sounds like he'll be fine come playoff time. But you've got to figure that out, and that is more concerning because this is not November anymore. This is not December. I don't care about the power play. I think it'll come and go, and they have so much talent there. I think it has the – potential to get hot at any point and be significant in the playoffs. But if you can't kill penalties, you're in big, big trouble. You're yeah. in big, big trouble. And it's and at a point, Hayes, where it's like you've got some skill out there killing penalties. If that's not working, get some, get, get right. Holmberg and get, get other big – change it up because don't just keep throwing that at it if it doesn't work. I don't know. But what, regardless of what they do, it's got to be fixed in a month's time. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know where it's you're going. Month. You know where you're going. You got a month. Exactly. I, like they've with all these wins and all these points, they've separated themselves. They're what are they, seven points up on Tampa. They're twelve up, I think, on Detroit or something. They're they're we and and the race is effectively over too because Boston and Florida are going to do what they're going to do. They're the three seed in the Atlantic. They're going to start either at Florida or at Boston. That's what's coming, and yeah. you got a month to prepare for that. Well, it's a month today, isn't it? I believe the playoffs start April 18th, I thought. I thought somebody told me that yesterday. I think Maybe the I was... last game is the 17th, I believe. So oh, is it? Okay. I would so assume it'll be, it'll just... be 19th or 20th, but it's yeah. around there, Noodles. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's well, about they, 30 days. The Leafs play the 17th. You're right. They play the last game of the season at Tampa. So it, I don't think it's the 18th. You're right. It'll probably be the 19th or 20th. So you're they might be you're staying still down there and going down the road to start in Florida. That's true. Yeah, you're right. That would be interesting. If they're in Florida on the 20th, do they come home, or do they just say, "Screw it, we're going to stay stay in well, Tampa and practice"? Well, they play they play the Panthers on the 16th. It's a back to back, right? So it's 16th, 17th, Florida, Tampa. So you're right. If it's if it's Florida, then they're pro- they're staying down there mm-hmm. to probably start that weekend. You know, I would I would think they'd probably start that Saturday, wouldn't they? Fr- prime time, you know, you, Friday you, or you Saturday. You never know. I mean, a lot of it comes down to the American TV, right? Like the yeah. Americans, they they make the call. And it, if they're playing Boston, it'll be prime time. If it's Florida, it could be a different story. I mean, they're going to play at seven o'clock. Uh, the, obviously, the other guys up here, they've got a lot of sway in that too, and they're going to want certain times. Yeah. But it can come down to who you play, when you play, timing of when you play. You know, is it seven o'clock, eight o'clock? Could you play a weekend game in the afternoon? You know, that's yeah. that has happened before. Um, but yeah, it, it's likely moving in that direction. The three seed against Boston or Florida, and you know, you look at Marner being absent here. You can feel his absence. Like you can, you can feel he's not out there. He guys, great player, plays a ton of minutes and. You know, Matthews in particular, before we all went on our break, or, oh, you and I left, he was yeah. slowing down a little bit, and he had a goal in Philly the other night, but I think he's got three goals in his last ten. And, you know, I, I think what's happened here, too, is that, like, we've kind of slammed the brakes on the heart conversation, partially because he slowed down offensively. Yeah. But I think there's also an element of the Leafs, because they're kind of in this middle ground, they're not chasing anything, that narrative's over. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're chasing down Boston or Florida trying to get up into the top seed in home ice, or you're in a position where goaltending and injuries dragged you down into a wild card, and he's going to drag them into a wild card position. They're probably in neutral just cruising into the third seed. He may start to load manage, and if he ends up with 62, 63 goals, it's probably a different story, right? Like, it, it feels like McKinnon over the last 10 days, too, has said, thank you very wow. much. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll take it from here. I mean, the, the other guys are playing great. They're and, playing and, unreal. You know, McDavid's but, been great. Kucherov's but, been great. But the thing is, too, is, is you know, Matthews, regardless, okay, whether it's not 70 or it's 66 or whatever, it still has to be a, a number that he's comfortable with, too, heading into the playoffs. We say this all the time. Like, I, I know it's a little different narrative, and you know, we were talking to Struddy last week. Struddy's like, I don't think McDavid cares about – trophies he's he's got his eye on the prize i i think that's where matthews has to have that focus too he's won a heart he's he won mm-hmm. rockets he's going to win the rocket like it's more about you know are you going to be productive at the most important time that's yeah. the focus And whatever right that now. number is noodles go ahead and get that if you yeah, want to kind of cruise in because for him to stay in the heart conversation with the point differential with those other guys he would have just have to keep piling them home mm-hmm. and he would have had to get to 70 or 75 goals and if that it's not like you you're just going to wake up one day and quit on that. But if the realization is go ahead and look, if, if what you need to be the best in the playoffs is take the odd night off coming down the stretch when things are really clinched, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. 
because yeah. that's all that really matters for all those guys. Yeah, well, and I think that could actually be a benefit in the end. Is and speaking of McDavid, the same thing. Like, is he chasing an Art Ross? No, he doesn't care about an Art Ross. Go ahead, have it, McKinnon. He cares about being in the right frame of mind. You know, gelling with whoever he's going to be playing with and making sure they're prepared for the playoffs. And obviously, they want home ice, right? Like they're sitting there in the two seat in their division. They want home ice. Right. I don't know who. The, I'm guessing they'd rather play LA in the first round than Vegas. Vegas is not a lock. Like again, Vegas is only four points in. Wow. Like they, they still got that was a get fall there. for them, man. Yeah, absolutely, they they yeah. were cruising early in the Dude, year. They were gone. First in the yeah. league. Yeah, they, wow. it was them in Vancouver that were gone, and it's completely flipped. Well, Eichel's just come back now. Like they've they've been a really banged up team this year. But you're right. Like there's teams chasing. Like St. Louis. I, I'll tell you what. This Jordan Bennington. He's like dragging St. Louis into within, we'll call it sniffing territory. Yeah, absolutely. Sniffing. That's what it is. It's a miracle still, but you're close. It, it is. But you're sniffing. And, you know, Vegas is dangerous because they've got players that can come back in the playoffs, but they're still, you know, they're a team that can beat you, but they're, they're not a whole team right now. I'll tell you what, I don't know if you guys, I know you're on vacation or we're on vacation did you see that Edmonton Colorado game the other? Yeah. That was a hell of a hockey game, like a hell of a hockey game. Star power, like good goaltending. Like I, I thought that was unbelievable. Just theater watching that. What game. a matchup that would be! A seven game awesome. series with those two teams that would be disgusting. Yeah, I think it's uh, that's up. a dream come true. I think for everybody is if you can get McDavid versus McKinnon in a series. I mean that that is probably what I would choose. Like if I could pick yeah. two teams out west, with all due respect. Winnipeg, Vancouver, those would be my two teams. I want to see those two in a conference final. You're guaranteed one of those two players in a cup final. And, yeah, I agree. I mean, the pace is high. Colorado's red hot right now. I think they've won like yeah. seven in a row. Yeah. And that's yeah. really what it is. Like, it's, it's, there's a lot of these teams who are in it that are not surprised they're in it. No one should be surprised. No one is. Everyone knew this back in September. We're like, Colorado's going, Edmonton's going, Toronto's going, Florida's going. Like, they all took different paths to get there. Edmonton's being the most extreme with the way it started for them. But forget what happened in the past. If you look at it simply today and then you get to April 18th, you're like, all right, that's pretty much what I thought. Are there some surprises? Yeah. Vancouver doing what they've done all year? has been incredible. The fact that Nashville has played their way in the way they've played. Detroit making it would be a surprise and would be a really cool story. Although they're holding on for dear life, Philly would be a surprise. But no one's surprised that Carolina's in, right? That the Rangers are in, that Boston's in, that Tampa's going to make it. Like, this is kind of what we all saw coming. And it was always going to be about who strikes at the right time, who gets hot at the end of the year. And, you know, we were having that chat a few minutes ago with the Matthews scenario. Like, what is his focus going to be on as he gets closer to to game one of the playoffs. And that's not the only storyline the Leafs got to figure out, right? Like we've talked about it. They got to figure out their penalty kill, moving pieces around on the power play. What are you going to do with Matthews? And then beyond him, what are you going to do with your other big boys? Because there's other guys chasing numbers. Like Willie's chasing numbers. Willie, I'm sure, wants to get to 100 points. And I, at this yeah. rate, I would assume he will, right? He's been more than a point a game guy all year. I think he needs 13 to get there. He's going to get he can, there. He, he can chase that all he wants, Hayes. But at the end of the day, we talked about with all the period in the league, the parity in the league. It's whose best players are going to click at the right time come mm-hmm. playoff time and who can all gel. So if he wants to go ahead and get 100 points, but as far as the Maple Leafs perspective, it's can these guys step up and be the best players in a matchup against another quality team? Because they've yet to do that. We can talk about failures and systems and all that, but in years past, it's like, if you look up, look at a matchup like against the Boston Bruins, Mitch Marner, can you outplay Brad Marchand in the seven-game series? William Nylander, Pasternak, that's yeah. your guy. You want to match up against him and outplay him in a seven-game series? Austin Matthews, I don't even know who that matchup would be, but you would think he would have to be better for well, them to it's win. it's Charlie it. Coyle, but it, exactly, it better be. But Coyle's been great. Like yeah. Coyle, Coyle's been really good. Sack but that's, really all, good. that's yeah. what they're looking for. It's like we, we're all looking for these magical things like goaltending, special teams. Those guys have yet to – we've seen them play games where we're like, man, those guys were unstoppable tonight. But it's mm-hmm. doing it at the come playoff time that everyone's waiting to see. And they're going to be waiting very anxiously again come April time. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but, it, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's going to be the weird thing for me, guys, is it might be almost last game of the season to, before you figure out who you play because it's that tight between Florida and Boston. I don't know. I don't have the schedule in front of me. Do they play each other? 
Like, wouldn't yeah, that be I, amazing? I think they have each other two more times, Noodles. Wouldn't that I think, be amazing? A, a home and like, away. But, yeah. you know, like last get, last day of the season, you're sitting there going, where are we going? Like, are we staying in Florida? Or are we going up to, to Boston? Like, that's what it's going to be for a few of these teams, you know, out east, but even out west, too. Like, you know, the, the, the seeding, I, I think it's going to be real. Like, Minnesota's trying to make a run. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's... There, excuse me. There's some teams like St. Louis. There's, um, you know, well, Calgary, even LA and Vegas gone. are tied yeah. points. You know, yeah. are, are you going to Vancouver or are you going to Edmonton? You know, like something like that is likely going to come right down to the the stretch run. And I, I've noticed that that's a big part of the conversation. And I understand why it is with fans. I mean, that's the beauty of being a fan is you can have these chats. Yeah. And Leaf fans will remember last year, Game Seven. Everyone was watching Boston, Florida. You know, we want Florida. We want Florida. And well, they got Florida, and we saw what happened. And I, I've, I've come around on you know the idea that there's a better choice one way or the other because of what you just said. Oh, I, I don't care if the Leafs play Boston, if they play the Panthers, if they play the '85 Oilers, the '77. Yeah, they're way Habs. beyond. We were they're way beyond the matchup. It's because way it's the same beyond. Qu- yes, it's way on, beyond. It's dude. simply on you. It's and I'm yeah. again, I'm not putting words into their mouth. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that in the room the Leafs are like, man, I hope Boston wins. You know, I don't think they're thinking that way. But if if and it says something about the the psyche of the fan base, you know how delicate it is, the delicate history, the unfortunate history. Let's call it what it is. To the point where you are concerned about that because you're worried about mojo, you're worried about curses, you're worried about past matchups, past losses. This team's got to get to a point come game one of the playoffs where they are exuding so much confidence, it doesn't matter who they play. You bring on anybody, and that better be their motto, that better be their approach. But the guys who are going to have to lead that charge, it's Matthews and Marner and Tavares and Nealander. It's not only about what – performance you're going to bring on the ice you know what are you going to do in your 23 minutes or your yes. power play and time? if their goalie sticks What's to join out mentality? that won't that won't matter but those guys have to lead the charge and right. be dominant players and they got to step yeah. on the ice game one take and be like, turns we are here take to, turns. to absolutely dummy people because like, in all the sports center win. hits i've done in the playoffs i've never once night after night said tonight it was matthews that was unstoppable watch this the next night watch nylander they couldn't stop him or this guy was making great plays, or they all did it together. I've never really done that. I've well, never really done it. Hence why they've only won one round, right? I mean, yeah. it, it happened against Tampa, and even there, Tampa played well. And I think if we all watched every second of the games, we're like, man, Tampa, probably the better team, but the Leafs found a way to get some bounces and well, yeah, get some wins. Yeah, there was overtimes, and, right? That, those were, yeah. you know, those overtimes, Three overtimes in Tampa. Either. Right. It could have gone either way, but they found a way to get it done. And that's, you know, you have to continue to do that. You know, the big thing is health down the stretch, too. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood for everybody because, it, you know, that's well, you got the... Marner and Yarncroke out. Now Labushkin's sick. He, he's going to be yeah. fine. He'll return. And, and by all accounts, Marner's going to be back, you know, before the playoffs. But a Sooner high ankle later, sprain. Yeah. You never know, man. And then it's like, does it affect your cardio? Does it affect your rhythm? Um, but they're not alone. Like, every team in the yeah, league is going to be dealing with that. Everyone's got injuries. Everyone's got illnesses. Everyone's got question marks. You know, yep. like, that's the thing about, about the league right now. Boston and Florida are really good teams. They're not, like, super teams. They're not, like, all-time great teams. They have flaws, too. And if their goaltenders start to leak oil, you're in trouble. They're in trouble, you know. And that's going to be a topic over the next month, and we'll get into it, you know, throughout the afternoon. Samson, I was playing a lot recently. You know, he was good on – I wouldn't say he was great. I mean, but, again, it was kind of weird, fluky, end of the game, end of the period, shorthanded type goals going against him. But Joseph Wall, ever since the Bruin games – kind of played himself out of the rotation, and I'm curious to see what they decide to do this week. They have a back-to-back, obviously, coming up where they're both going to play. But that question mark, as far as I know, is still kind of up for debate, like who is going to be in net here as we get closer to game one. But, yeah, it's you know it it was an interesting game on Saturday. And Carolina, they win last night as well. They're going to Ottawa, and they they pump the Sens. And, you know, Gensel's there, and he's – come alive and he had a great weekend and Kuznetsov Kuznetsov all of a sudden looks like it's 2019 again 2018 great transaction getting that guy he took a chance man I think it could be great and I think Roddy Brindamore could get that guy going I think it could be a great fit for him he looked reinvigorated like seeing it up close and personal. We, we've seen him. This guy's uber talented, but he, he's in and out of games. You know, like sleeper some nights you're like, didn't even notice him. I know. I think, you know, with his off ice struggles, well documented, he seems like, you know, in, in the limited time he's played for Carolina, 
there's a new lease on life there. A second chance knows that, hey, this is kind of last chance. Like they pulled him off the scrap heap. They found a way to get him there. He's uber talented. Now he's going to have to learn to work consistently because the Brendan Moore, that coach, he demands that, right? Man, but he's they, a good coach. He's like a that's good another. Coach. That's you talk about in September. Is Carolina going to be there? Yeah, probably will. Probably yeah. going to end up with 107 points, and Rod Brendan Moore is going to find a way to do it again. Wow, and Freddie you know what's is crazy though, guys. There. It's yep. crazy to talk about the idea of Rod Brindamore not having a contract right now. Like for next year. For next year. Like how that wasn't done before the beginning of the season for Rod. You have to, Whew. you both would agree that Rod Brindamore and John Cooper are the best coaches in the game. Five, I think it is. Five consistently million dollar coach. A top five coach in the league every year. Yes. Yeah, and it seems year. like this owner who bought the team for like $230 million and now they're worth $980 million. And you don't want to pay your head coach what he deserves and his staff. It just seems like he has these preconceived notions where it's like, I'm just going to, I don't have to pay that guy that. That's what he thinks. Mm. And Roddy Brindamore already took a haircut. I don't even know if he makes $2 million in the National Hockey League after winning the coach of the year. I just hope they get that straight because that's embarrassing. They better pay that guy. Because if I was Roddy, I would say, I want this done before the playoffs or I'm going to be a UFA because I guarantee 10 teams would take him and they would pay all of I would take everybody. Mm. Video coaches, gym guys, all of it and say, we're all leaving if you don't want to pay us. That's embarrassing. $230 million he bought the team for and it's worth 980 now. Biggest turnaround in North American sports, and he doesn't want to pay the best coach in the league. Well, Their Twitter I, I feed always – Huh? Playing with fire, man. You're playing, playing with, with fire. fire. Their team tweets out all the time, best coach in hockey, and they don't want to pay him. That bothers me a lot, well, and I, I hope I, they figure it out. I hope they do too because I, I hope that's just a, you know, a hard-line negotiation, but in the end they go, hey, you're worth every penny of whatever we sign you to because you're right, there's – it, Ten might be rich, but there's five teams that would put up their hand in a second and go, "We got four million for you here." Oh yeah, five million, four. whatever that number. Four Listen, million four was five. three years ago. Well, I don't know what the coaches are making. I, I I I believe it's four to you know three to five million. So Rod's on the top of that spectrum. We'll call it five. So there's five million on a five year. Didn't Barry Trotz get that to go to New York for the Islanders? Yeah, so that I was think four he got or five. That was years ago. ago. That was four or five but, years ago. But I don't know what coaches are signing for right now. Regardless of what he makes, noodles, he better get paid, or it's a joke. I would Agreed. tell him I want it done before the playoffs, and just take a picture on the bench of his whole staff and write the number down for every guy to be paid, and say if you don't want to pay it, we're going to go somewhere else. Because you mentioned five teams, I think five teams might fire their coach to bring him in. Oh, I <laughs> agree top, with you. I think like great teams, like ruthless teams that are constantly trying to get yes. better type teams are right. like, yeah, we'll do that. Even if it's an upgrade yes. of 10%, yes. we'll do that because, you know, Rod Brindamore is what he is, what he is and, yeah. you know, consistently gets the, the most out of his group. I mean, Carolina, we saw it up close and personal Saturday. That's a, I, that's a legit team. Very yeah, legit. If they get goaltending, Noodles brought it up the other day. If they get Freddie Anderson comes alive and he can do the job for them, they could be dangerous. That's a big if, though. Well, his health is, right? I watched him live last night. Like, he's he's Freddie. Big goaltender, moves well in the net. They don't give up a lot. Like, Carolina, that was an outlier against the Leafs, giving up four break four breakaways. No kidding. Right. Four. Bobby McMahon, that, it was like a video game. I, I thought Brendan Moore's head was going to pop off his body because that was uncared. They give up the least amount of shots per game, if you look at them statistically, around 26. The Leafs had, I think, at 40. Like, they... They were that was an outlier for them as far as defensively, but like last night, that was their game. Work hard, grind you down, and then now they've got some offensive guys mm-hmm. that can find the back of the net. And Freddie, he looked good last night. Now I don't know how long it'll last. I think he's eight and one since he's come back or something, something ridiculous. He he's but he looks good. Like he looks like the Freddie Anderson that we you know that we had here in Toronto yeah. when he was when he was playing. It was like, years ago now. When you like, it's but, pretty wild but, his story. Although he's only been in Carolina, it's not like he's jumping around the league. No, but you just think about it. Like we did a board last night of the highest winning percentages in the history. Not not just the like the history of the NHL for goaltenders. Number one is Ken Dryden, who's north of seven hundred percent. You know who number two is? <laughs> Freddie Tell Anderson. Tell me it's Freddie Anderson. You're kidding me. Freddie Anderson is wedged in from between Ken Dryden and Andre Vasilevsky. Wow. 
for win percentages in the history of the National Hockey League. Let me That's... guess, you guys brought that up when it just started to get out of hand in that third period. No, so we actually ran it. Watch, we man. ran it at two two. The game was two two until the end of the second period. We ran it then. We were just talking about win percentage because Freddie's like seven and one mm-hmm. heading into the game last night. And Sam Cicerello was like, take a look at this board. It was Ken Dryden, Andre Vasilevsky, and Frederick Anderson. Fred Almost Anderson. I love it. Well, hey, listen, why not? Why not? percentages. He, they, they were a good team in Anaheim when he was there. Like, they were, they good were a good team. team. In Toronto. Good team in Toronto, and they've been a good team in Carolina. Like, that's yeah. smart, smart playing, too, by Freddie. Like, you know, you can't choose where you're going to start your career or who you get traded to. But as a free agent, he could have gone anywhere. He's like, Carolina makes a lot of sense. And they win. They win a lot. Um, all right, we got a big show today. Doug Armstrong on the show today. Chris Johnston coming up from the GM meetings. Alex Anthopoulos will join us. We'll catch up with Alex later this afternoon. Joey Votto, his scene over the weekend. We'll touch on Votto and what's going on with him, what's going on with the Jays. A lot of news in the NFL. A lot of news in the NHL as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Doug Armstrong will join us, the GM of the St. Louis Blues, Team Canada GM. That was announced late last week as well. He'll join us in about a half an hour. And uh, Chris Johnston still to come as well. The Leafs are in action tomorrow night down in Philly. And uh, the Jays are still moving towards the opening day. And Joey Votto's in camp. And the three of us, we talked about it (laughs) when they signed him. And... Why didn't you know. they do that right off the hop? Like, well, what, why was there a delay on that? I don't I think, it, think they really wanted to sign him. I mean, that yeah. would be my assumption is that they weren't, you know, it's a combination of he's a local guy. It will play well in Toronto, which it has. It, does, it's, it doesn't cost them anything. It's a minor. Okay, I'll re- let me re-ask the question. Why did it take halfway through training camp to be interested? That, Tell me that. that I don't have an answer for. I, I, I honestly, think it was throwing him a bone. I think yeah. he had nothing, and they threw him a bone and said, why didn't you come try out? Yep. And now the guy stepped on a bat and rolled his ankle. I, like, it couldn't have been worse. He hits a first-pitch <laughs> home run, which is amazing. Yes. Like, first-pitch home run. What a story. Here's Joey Votto. He's 40 years old. He's from Toronto, from Etobicoke. You know, he's he's obviously a, a different cat. We've interviewed him many times. But he's he's a great ball player, great, great player. And he hits a home run and then walks into the dugout and rolls his ankle on a bat, which is it's Dude, such a no, it's, fluky it's, that, That's death in a tryout type scenario. Exactly. Because guys yes. that are injured. I injured myself once at the World Juniors, and Donnie Hay basically said to me, he goes, if you're sitting up there watching, no disrespect, but it, it's going to be very difficult. Like, yeah, because yeah. you're just standing around and guys are playing well. You can't. It's the worst scenario for him to not be able to play. The worst, the worst. And it's it was damaging enough that he came out because he's aware of that. Joey Votto's not stupid. He's been in baseball a long time. He yeah. knows this is one lifeline he has, and it may not only be with the Jays. He just wants to he wants to get some tape out there. He wants another team maybe to say, hey, he's still got something. His velocity off the bat. Maybe he can play first base, DH. He's not an everyday ball player anymore. It's not going to happen. He's had, he's 40. He's had injuries. Cincinnati. He wanted to be in Cincinnati. Remember, we, we interviewed him and we asked him, like, hey, you ever think about being a Jay? He laughed in our face. Like, literally laughed in our face. <laughs> no, that's face. not why he laughed in your face. You I asked him if you were if he was going down to the ballpark to watch the Jays. Right. It, a bit of a different context, but the build-up yes. to it was, you're a Toronto guy. You must have loved the Jays. You know, when you come home, is it, you ever think about heading down to the park? And he literally, he, he laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> a maniacal bond he villain laugh. in our, it laughed in our was face. He laughed in exchange. my face. Yeah, that was the weirdest exchange I've ever experienced doing this job. It easily, was, I, easily outside yeah. of. If I had a talk, if I had a talk back button, I would have said, "Hang up on that guy." Well, <laughs> the one more awkward one text. <laughs> was we awkward. We we interviewed a wrestler a few years ago who was in character. And we didn't get the memo on that. <laughs> remember that? What was that guy's name? I can't remember who it was. It was but... so. It was like yeah, hacksaw Jim Duggan or the, something. I don't but... think I was on the it, show for it, a You were on it, man. You were yeah. on it. You, you may no. have been off that day, but whoever it was, I, like I'm bringing him. I'm like, hey, here's Gary Johnson. Hey, Gary. What's...? <laughs> and he's like, 
I'm going to kill the ultimate war, you know, whatever. Yeah. It was. I was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> like, it, it was, I need it. Was it. A I need a replay. It was I need Hayes. a replay. Yeah. It was a pre-tape, and it was you and me, Hayes. Okay. And you were like, what is going on here? Because the guy wild. came Did on. it go to air? I don't, I don't think know. I don't know if we played it. I think we trimmed it down a little bit after <laughs> we realized because the guy was pump, like the guy was pumping something, but he came on in character, yeah. and it was just like, "What is going on?" And I don't watch wrestling, so I didn't even know what was going on either. And you tried to fight through it, and he was like making comments. I think I was. Like, a, I think I was on for that pre-tape. It was something it was, else. Well, I'll never forget. We got to find out who that was. I can't we got to get the actual. We got to get it first. We should find and, it. We should find because it's up there with Jake Delhomme. It. It's it's yeah. actually it's Delhomme. <laughs> <laughs> but this was more awkward because, like, Jake DeLome was Jake DeLome. You're this right. guy, like, I thought I was interviewing this guy or we were interviewing this guy. Like, how'd you get into the business? Like, what, yeah. what's your favorite city to, you know, perform in? Hey, what do you think of yeah. this? And this guy's literally in character being like, I'm going to get the Brooklyn Brawler yeah. on Saturday night. Yeah. Like, Dude, you yeah. can't you do this. You know what it was? It was gold dust. <laughs> no. Was it the actual gold? Oh, it was. It was like Dustin Rhodes or whatever. Yeah, it's Dusty Rhodes or whatever that yeah, guy's name. Yeah, it was. It was Dustin Rhodes. It was gold dust. I think you're right, Noodles. <laughs> well, and, JP just got my ear and said it because I wouldn't have known, but it was Dusty Rhodes. Dustin or- Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, it was Dustin Rhodes, and I'm trying to interview him about his dad and being around the business forever and this guy. And was would not break character. It was wild. <laughs> so between that, Jake DeLome, uh Joey Votto laughing in my face. Um, but <laughs> you know, again, getting back to Votto, I, I think his he never wanted to leave in Cincinnati. And I, I have an appreciation for that. But Cincinnati was telling him, We don't have a future for you here. So, you know, he wants to play. He's twenty five hits behind Larry Walker for the most hits all time by a Canadian born player. I would assume that's a part of his passion, but I also just think he's a baseball guy. I mean, he just loves to play ball. He wasn't and really I, to walk away. That's the yeah, he doesn't want, and yeah. he'll do anything he can. And and the idea of you know showing up to Dunedin and he's he's you know he was with the minor league, he was basically with the minor league team over the weekend, which is fine. But he's got to prove it. Just it doesn't add up because they have Vogel back here, they have Turner, who's their kind of veteran now. I don't know where he fits. He's obviously not an everyday guy. He's not going to DH. He's not going to play first. I mean, Vladdy's going to do that. So I don't know where he fits. I think it'd be an incredible story. I, I, I'm not naive enough to put it past the ownership of the Jays, Shapiro, you know, them to understand what it could mean from a marketing standpoint, like the idea of Joey Votto. I don't think chasing Larry Walker is a thing that most Canadian baseball fans are even aware of. Like, I don't think people right. are like, wow, man, he's only 25 hits behind. But you can build that up pretty quickly, right? Like, if, yeah. if he ends up making the team and he, he gets 24 hits over the course of a couple of months or whatever it is, that you know the Jays. It'll be a big story. Jason Walker, Jason Walker, Joey Votto, Canadian So is Votto a, ho- a Hall of Fame player? I think he's right on the border. Uh, I He's... Probably like Walker, where it might take him a while. He's not a first ballot guy. But I think once you look back on his career, you'll probably say, yeah, he could get in there. In terms of you know his war stats, his on-base percentages are crazy. His hitting stats, he's won MVPs. Like he's I'd won like batting titles. He's a great I'd player. Like, I want to see him make the team. I want to see him be a part of it. Like if he, Here's the thing. You have Justin Turner, who's a veteran guy who's won and all of that. But if you could have Joey Votto on the team as well, in some capacity, help these younger guys. And I know we're past the moral victories and helping the young. But but maybe there is some some level of experience that he can bring to this group. And it would be a great story. And maybe we'll have him on the show again, and he will be a lot different. He will not be like uh, Alan just wrote to me. He goes, it was Dustin Rhodes during COVID, and his Co- Cody Rhodes is his brother. He was fighting Kip Sabian. I didn't, Kip I, Sabian. So that was it. I'm like, I rem- now that exactly what it was. Hey, how are we why doing? Were, why why, why did we have him on it anyway? Was during COVID. It was well, a promotional well, thing. It was, I yeah. think, TNA, I believe, which is on TSN. It was, you know, all right. Yeah. And, and he's a ro- he was part of the Rhodes family. He is. I'm like, all right, that's kind of cool. Like, I, I, yeah. I had all this stuff planned for Gold Dust. I'm like, I got to get yeah. into this guy's Gold Dust story. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, kicks Kip Saberlin. I'm going to get him on Saturday. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> Who is Kip Saberlin? 
<laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I it don't was know. awkward, but hey, what are you going to do? It happens, right? We've been yeah. doing this show long enough that you can have some ups and you can have some downs, and it's all yeah. good. But you know, with Vlado, you, it's a good point though, and, and you can speak to it as a veteran. Now, now you're you're already behind the eight ball because you showed up late. Yeah, you're obviously he's aware that he was not their first choice, second, third, fourth, fifth, and now you're injured, and you were injured enough that you had to come out of the game. Like you couldn't even battle through. It's like it was bad enough that you're out of the game. And I, I think his hope is that he'll return midweek, later in the week. But you know, if you're if you're out three, four, or five days, the probably season begins in, in a week and a half. Yeah, and I guess what they would have to figure out is I don't know. Like you just mentioned, Hayes, I don't know where he's going to fit in the lineup. And if this is a guy that's just going to sit around every three or four days and then just come off the bench and, and, and hit once in a while, what's his mentality and approach going to be like to be around all the other guys if that's, mm-hmm. that's what he's going to be doing? Because that's you tough can transition. Say, yeah. It is. You can say, oh, I'm a team guy. I just want to play in the league, blah, blah, blah. But when you're put in that role, when you're a star player basically for 18 years, we'll see where your mental's at and how good of an attitude you have when you're just sitting and watching and you're just coming off the bench in random situations every three to four days. Yeah. Because it's not a ton of fun. No. So how bad do you want to do that? That'll say a lot about his mentality. You're right. Because it, it's not like he's been grinding in a depth player for you know the last no. 10. This guy's he has been the man the in man Cincy Cincinnati. for a long time. Yep, the man. Exactly. Yep. And yet, for the Jays, and this is what complicates things, because on one side of it, they're like, we can market this guy. He's a local guy. It's also he's going to be not a distraction, but media's going to want to talk to him all the time because of who yes. he is. And well, you know, at the same time, you're like, well, he's not even really playing. So it's hard though. Do you remember Yarmer Yager at the end? He was more of a distraction than he was a player. You know, like that because they're you know they were trying to get him in the lineup, trying to find him. Joe Thornton. Same thing. Remember yeah. Joe Thornton was like yeah. first line, second line, third line, fourth line. Yeah, we can't find a spot for you, but boy, you're you know, you're great a great guy. guy. Love we you. love you, all Hockey of that. Lifer and it's yeah. Yeah. Like you got there is a balance, but I, I do I do some part of me wants him to make the team just so that it's a great story, local guy, and maybe something could come out of it. I agree. I think I'll it'd tell be a you really one cool thing. story. It would be a good transition, and I speak from experience. If he wants to transition into the media and do Jay stuff, I don't know what he wants to do post retirement. It would help his resume if he played one season for the Blue Jays. Yeah, absolutely, trust me, yeah. I know that. Yes, you would know that from experience. Uh, yes. he, gets, he gets an alumni jacket down at the dome. That's going to go a yes. long way. <laughs> yes, a long if way. I, right? If I'm just former Kane, I don't even know if I walk in that <laughs> building. Uh, all right, That's Doug funny. Armstrong in about 20 minutes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Doug Armstrong coming up in about 15 minutes. A lot going on in sports right now. Basically, every sport, including the golf world, where I guess there's some big meeting down in the Bahamas right now, which is so <laughs> it's so typically goofy golf, like no self awareness. Private jets, billionaires in the Bahamas, and like they're at the players. There's a boardroom there. Why not just do it there today? Right. Exactly. Why did it have to be in Bahamas? It's a great question. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's about getting into the U.S. or something. I don't know. But, you know, the head of PIF is come, is going to be there and Tiger's down there. And listen, at the end of the day, the players was unreal. Scotty Scheffler's an absolute machine. Yeah. It I almost feel, it, it felt like the tour needed that. I mean, nothing against the unsuspecting winners and the unknowns, but the tour needed a big boy event and a big boy performance. And they got it from Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, I mean, the guy, he, he, I think historically he, he'll get burned a little bit because of the live stuff. People will hold that against him, right? Like he went on fire when DJ left and Kepka and Rom and Cam right. Smith. But you look at his statistics. They're no one's insane, gone back to back of the players. Yeah, no. it's like T to green. He's the best player in the world. It doesn't matter what tour you're on. Guy's dude, an absolute his, machine. He he top threes it on his C game. That That's how good he is, like – He's not Tiger Woods, and they was asked about Tiger Woods the other day after he won in the presser, and he's like, I'm not even going there because he's just on a completely different level. But T to green, that guy strikes it as just as good as anyone, man. Yeah. It's just a bullet down the middle, and it's 10 feet, and it's whether his putter is hot or not. Yeah, he, and if his putter is hot, you're toast. As, you're yeah. toast. 
Yeah, and and you bring up Tiger. They got to get away from that on the Golf Channel in particular. Like, I, no kid, they're just dying to bring it's him too up. Much. It's, like, it's, it's enough. It's every single conversation. Well, you remember Tiger? Remember Tiger at Bay Hill? Remember? It's guys. That was twenty years ago. Uh, we all love Tiger. We get it. But like, but you hey, got to you got to move on from him. He's not playing they, anymore. They can't, man. They can't move on from it. Even when he, well, it started. The whole Tiger Bonanza. He'd be out of contention on the front nine or the back nine away from the turn. And they're showing every shot. And it's like, isn't that a little much? Right. Now he's injured or whatever he is. He's not even around. They, oh, go back to Tiger at this shot. At the six. What? Come on. Man. I know. Every comparison. They, they got to figure out a way to move on because it's, it's going to be game over very soon. Right. Wow. And, and like, I don't, I don't remember in the early 2000s and media was totally different. But was Jack Nicholas hanging over everything? Like was everything well, Jack Nicholas no. and Jack Nick? I don't think so. I mean, it's been twenty years. The guy, yeah. his, Tiger, is who he is. His 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 premier season was twenty four years ago. Twenty four. But he's still hanging around. That's why. No, though. I know. But like, dude, that's just, that. It reeks of desperation because of the star power that's gone, and but, they, they just they they have to keep that guy's name in circulation. But, I would well, imagine he, producers, everybody says, oh, yeah. try, you, you got to well, have this guy in a pregame show or yeah. whatever during and the broadcast. He sells. He sells. But, but shouldn't Tiger just hang him up then, and then then you can make him part of the pass? The fact I thought it was awfully weird around, he wasn't teeing around. it up this weekend. I thought it was. I thought awfully so weird. too. I mean, he, he can he can golf in the Bahamas and broker deals, and he's at Seminole at the pro am. I don't know. It was. Strange for sure. I wonder if the timing had something to do with this meeting. He's like, I'm actually not playing. I'm going down to the Bahamas early. I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I think the retirement would be something noodles. But it's it's just even the like in the the panelist conversations yeah. are constantly just bringing them up organically, and it's like, guys, got to get it's off enough. like t- yeah. what Tiger did 20 years ago. That's a whole new era, and it's not fair to Scheffler. And Scheffler, you got to give him 10 years, give him 10, 15 years, and we'll see where he goes. All right, hour two coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.